So for the past 15 years, we've had like the blessing and curse of trying to make a complete trip happen. I feel like most years we have one or two days of good fishing and then it kind of shuts down. And then you look back at the whole week and you realize maybe four, five <laughs> hours of the entire trip was actually really good fishing. The rest of it was just working your ass off, trying to make something happen that normally didn't. I think there's always been this dream for us at least to do a complete trip to have every single day not go our way because you can't control that in fishing but you know what i'm saying like yeah you just want the opportunity to at least see what you came there to, to see i feel like you book you know four days to expect two good days you know normally when you do a weekend trip or something but with a week-long trip you got seven days to make something happen you just want to at least see something that you came there for like we've had again the blessing of traveling since we were young but we had it we were doing these really terrible awful budgets and seeing like how far we can stretch it and so every chip something went wrong <laughs> i get to change my underwear all right now a five hour car ride an hour and a half boat ride Yay! roll tide and we never had one that was complete. And so I think what's really special is, you know, that we we did this. We had seven days that are filled to the brim. And, you know, we did it in an area of Mexico where every day is different. A part journey <laughs> to this trip. Crew of eight people. Yeah. Three different fishing crews, five or six different cameras. See what happens. Yeah. It's great now, like in retrospect, because I'm not jinxing it. Because <laughs> I know I know we have the goods. George, you want to tell us why we're not in an uh, airplane we right now? We don't have time for this. We need to freaking go. Where are we going to drive to? Atlanta, let's go. Okay. <laughs> this is stupid. Uh, this, this truck's <laughs> also not going to make it there. Oil change, tire pressure sense, misfiring. It'll be fine. <sighs> Please hold on, this train is fast. I go, he's like, Agent Hunter Sullivan. I was like, is that the only place I can park? He's like, yes. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go there. Go there, full. Said covered parking was still not full. So I was like, how do I get into covered parking? They were all blocked. So I was like, well, reserve. I'm gonna go park at a hotel, get my truck towed, and get a uh, Uber. Uber. How you boys like margaritas? How we doing? Well, you made it. I'm really sick. Yeah. I'm glad I was gonna suggest y'all hop in the car, but I was thinking like, don't be cutting it close. That's the last thing I wanted to do. Look at these guys. Oh, it's you, bring it in. Welcome to the thing. I pop up on the thing. I was like, oh, oh that's gotta be that. I'm right there with you, so the two, the two yeah. tired. So we started the day with the text from Delta that like our connection's not gonna work. So what, in 10 minutes, Kai, we make the decision that we're gonna jump in the car and drive to Atlanta? Yes. Hello, man. Good hey, to see you, dude. Good. Welcome back. Good How are you, mate? And then, then Kai, the best fisherman there is. Is he the guy 
Yeah, watching the place. Basically, yeah. We started off, let's say we split up in two subgroups. So this is one of those spots that over all the years, there's always been tarp in here for some reason. It's kind of a cove, so the weed and the, the mucky water um, concentrates in this corner here. And we've been catching tarp in here well before the sargasso turned up. And now since that sargasso has been here, it's, it's got even uglier. You can smell it, right? That rotting weed. It's all deoxygenated and red back there, and those tarpon are just getting in there and rolling and stuff. Hopefully we'll see them on the surface. Cool. And yeah, we're going to pole around on the ocean side. Typically these fish are a little bit bigger. Uh, when the weed's coming in fresh, you'll see a lot of crustaceans in it. There's a sargasso shrimp and a sargasso crab. We get real lucky, we might see some of them. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I got a lucky charm. Nice. <laughs> That's yeah. all you need. The Bronco, baby. Imported. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's do it. All right. Alrighty. So Dembo took George and Fields in the John boat, and we were on the beach side. And then me and Dave went for a walk. But me and uh, David, we didn't really see a whole lot. Didn't have a whole lot going on. I, I blindly hooked what I think was probably a little snapper, and uh, and had a little bit of a pull tug from a trigger fish. But I mean, really wasn't a lot going on. So me and Dave were walking back towards the truck. We'd met with Dembo and them. And we decided we, we kind of came around this point and we we're like, all right, let's just meet back in the truck and then we'll go on or eat or whatever. And so me and Dave, we kind of got out ahead and there was two sets of rocks, like one before the truck and one right after the truck. And we got to the first set. We, I saw right off the bat, I saw a school of like five decent sized permit. I mean, not big, but like dinner plate size permit. And I was like, okay, hell yeah. Like there's some fish here. And then we saw, you know, a couple little like runs of, you know, little baby jacks or bait fish, hardtails or whatever. I started throwing at these, they didn't look very big. I started throwing at these little fish, right? And so I, I get a couple follows and one comes up, eats it, set it, and I'm fighting it. And I was like, man, for this little fish, he's digging pretty hard, you know? And then I see him, he kind of runs at the rocks and I see the stripes on his back. I was like, oh, it's a baby bone. Like, hell yeah, you know, like lucky bycatch. Yeah. So we get them in, you know, take them off, toss them in. Right after that, I think it was literally the next cast, I throw out and then there's all of a sudden this little, this school, I mean, it was quite a few fish, but there was little bitty permit. Yeah. Came around the end of the rocks and like a strip, 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 and one of them just flashes on it. And I was like, oh hell yeah, it was, it was like permit. And so we got him up and then uh, Nick was like, well, there's a ditch across the street. Yeah. You're one fish away from a slam. There's a ditch across the street with baby tarpon in it. And so we like run back to the truck and we tie on this little Charlie or whatever, and, or a little gotcha. And we run over there and it's like this chocolate, like rust chocolate milk ditch. And Nick's like, yeah, just like stir the water a little bit, you know, slap the, slap the rod in the water and a couple of fish roll. And so I cast out there. Keep your back cast high, back cast high. Tick, 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 tick. Do not let it sink at all. You see all the shit that's in here? Heck yeah, stay on it. <laughs> Damn, that's a decent fish. Right before Nick could get his hands on the leader, it unbuttoned. So it kind of slid down the bank a little bit. Cast in there. Yep, yep. Hell yeah. Up, up, up. Get in there. <laughs> Just boat flip the fish onto the shore. <laughs> Let's go! First tarpon too, to the hand. Hey. That's your first ever, isn't it? Yeah, it's actually the hand, yeah. Grab some! <laughs> we grab it, it's, you know, this tiny little tarpon. But I think the combined total of three was probably sub two pounds. Still counts. But it, so my, my first, my first, uh, well, it's my smallest bonefish I've ever caught, so that's kind of cool, I guess. First permit I've ever caught, and it was the first tarpon to hand for me. <laughs> okay. I hooked mini tarpon. It was the first time I've actually put my hands on it, and it was instant. It was like, it, you know, in a total of 
five casts over 30 minutes, I got the slam and two new two new fish for me. Uh, just, I wasn't even thinking about it. When I hooked that permit, it wasn't like, oh, I'm one fish away from it. And I was like, oh, cool, a permit, like yeah. my first permit. Yeah. And Nick's like, you're one fish away and there's a ditch right there. And I was like, well, that's right up my alley. Ditch pickles, you know, throwing, <laughs> throwing some creek on the side of the road that's right down my alley. And it's probably 30 minutes or less, yeah. I mean, I think Nick even said that. It's probably one of the fastest Grand Slams of all time. It's gotta be. There's gotta be an award for that. The smallest Grand Slam and the fastest yes. Grand Slam. <laughs> 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 Off the same rock. And so Nick Nick was gracious enough to say, Dan, you can name it. You know, do you wanna call it Dan's Rock or what? And I, I said, Dan's Rock sounds great to me. It was a trip. And then, I mean, the rest of the day was, you know, it was slow. We saw a lot of fish. George actually, he'll have to tell you about it, but I mean, I, me and Dave saw it from the beach and we saw it just. Have at it. But I want to hear about your day. Was it a long day? Well, yeah, I caught the one fish, and that's <laughs> the only one we caught. Uh, was it a morning fish or an afternoon fish? Afternoon. Oh, so it was a day, right at the day end of the seven. day. Yeah, day I seven. think it was one uh, one place that said, "Yeah, let's stop there and give it a shot right before we leave." And uh, that was a great call, <laughs> great call. Walking along the uh, beach, I notice a uh, small school, five or six of them. I yell at Ben, I'm trying to, thinking in my head how to give him directions of where to look, and it's not working, so then I just say, Ben, and point. <laughs> and then he tries to cast, but his line gets all tangled Wrecked. up. So I just <laughs> plop it right there, set it nicely, oh. set it. That easy, huh? Yeah. He Ty Martin them. Yeah, pretty much. There was uh, <laughs> one of them in the school was a he was a hefty fella, and I did not get that guy, unfortunately. <laughs> but still very pleased with uh, at least a fish on the first day. How does it feel, Sasha? Looking great. Nice, dude. All right. I mean, that's not a bad day one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we learned a lot. Yeah. We got five, five more days. Yeah. So I mean, as long as the weather holds out, I think uh, I think we're we're gonna at least see fish. Uh, the rest is not up to us. But uh, <laughs> you did kind of get hosed. Though. You got a grand slam on the first day, so uh, kind of all downhill deal. from here. Yeah. Yeah. I, Maybe you can get it to five pounds combined weight. If we could go up Later a pound, week. maybe a p in one pound increments. Yeah, okay, there we'll, we go. We'll, that's, that's the next step. Let's go up in one pound increments. The Pequeno slam. Yeah. So Nick did give me the pleasure of this gotcha. This was the, the, the gotcha that caught the tarpon that finished the slam. That's my gotcha. It's George's gotcha. I owe you.
Uh, no, but this morning I went to go put on my uh, my wading shoes, right? And I don't think I've I haven't touched those those wading shoes have been sitting outside of my house since we came back from Mexico last year. I have not touched them. They were filthy. Oh, that's right. Which one? And I stuck my hand in them to make sure there's no spiders. And I found a Bronco. Hot Wheels Bronco. And I, I think I said it out loud to, to Nick and the guys. I said, I think this is going to be my good luck charm. And I put this in my pocket. And all morning, I kept thinking, like, I'm going to see a fish. I'm going to see a fish. And I didn't see a fish. And then all that happened, and I forgot about the Bronco. And I got in the back of the truck, because I rode in the back of the, tr the bed of the truck after that slam. And I was laying there, kind of leaning back, drinking a beer, like relaxing, and I felt my pocket, and I was like, no way. And so I even texted my wife this morning, and I said, tell Olin I've got his Bronco for good luck. <laughs> I got that text message. I'm going to screenshot it. But that Bronco, my son's Bronco they, that he hid in my shoe was, was the good luck charm. Anyways, cheers to Olin. Cheers, Olin. Yeah. Salute to Olin. man. Right there. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's what you get. <laughs> Mess with the boy, you get the horns. That one hurt. I felt that. God, that fucking hurt, dude. <laughs> so, it hit you in the face. It stings. All right. No, I just want to. Do you want to kick things down. off? I'll start with you because we were together. So I want to hear your story. Yeah, Dave, how was y'all's day? Uh, we made a return to the original, kind of the original Holy Well day. We got a pretty early start. It was kind of a record setting for us, I think, 15 minutes. Call this some Mexican wake up alarm. That's impressive. Get out the uh, Get out the gate. Y'all were gone when I woke up. Y'all got uh, uh, early. Kind of just cruised on out there, drove straight there. It was the mangrove tunnel where everybody's pulling yeah. Yeah. yourselves through. Um, got out there. We got Kai, myself, and Ben um, running things up top. Sasha set up on the paddleboard. Did he stand uh, up? He did. Did he fall? Uh, no. Nice. Good <laughs> okay. job. Yeah. Mo later on in the story, I did both. Okay. Um, <laughs> but we'll get to that. Uh, so Ben starts off up top, gets to throw what I think three or four fish. I'm gonna run all over you. I'm looking for you. see some over the cenote and then we would just start doing the blind casting as you're going through the mangroves mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you have a shark just come out and grab out. Yeah. grab it yeah um so things kind of got off i don't know it wasn't like the it wasn't like the banner day last year we were just starting fly selection in the morning went through and grabbed one of the classic frogs as you should um, have fly finger discount because we didn't have one in our fly box and we knew you know we knew it was basically the feature of the film last year so we had to have at least one that's sorry. why i tied him sorry about that i should have taken um, three and then i was like wait a minute i want to get up and i want to say within five minutes it was pretty cool i hadn't seen a fish yet but we come up and literally 10 yards we see a fish roll <laughs> nick's like throw 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 so i had the fly in hand at that point i just flipped the frog oh, you, oh, you right on to where right on to where yeah. it had rolled fish comes back up i said it okay good fish david good fish <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, I love it, man. <laughs> Hi. It rolled right in front of you. That was just so sweet. Absolutely love it, David. Well fished, sir. Well fished, David. That was fun to watch. Look out for a jump here, did it run? Very nice. Say hi. Listen, That's a well done. That <laughs> yeah, couldn't have been sweeter. He rolled right in front of you. You saw it well, right? Well deserved, bro. What a great piece yeah. of fishing. <laughs> Thank you, sir. What a wonderful thing. You saw him, you put it right in front, pop. It took, a, it took a year to figure it out. Bowed on every jump, solid 20 pound plus fish. Wonderful. Fantastic. One, one worth waiting for, right? Yeah. yeah. Well done with not breaking that rod as well. Really, really great fight. Um, that's about as big a size fish as we want to play with that high rod. You know, it's very jumpy and that's how you survive the jumps, right? And uh, so you did absolutely super. Thank you. And then, yeah, awesome. No, we brought it in. You can call it him. Yeah, I Dave put his hand. Him. Dave put his hands on a poon. Call my first starfin. Hell yeah, brother. Um, which oh, was, geez, brother. which was exciting. So now you're, <laughs> now you're one for sixty-seven. I uh, yeah, like one for yeah. yeah Cheers. Too. Yeah. So it was a it was a decent sized fish. I mean, I've never caught a tarpon before, so I would have been happy with Hell anything. Yeah, yeah. But nice. um, yeah, kept me out there for a while. So, got to survive probably a half a dozen jumps, which was really exciting. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I'm not really sure what to do. It's all that, it's all that Central Park practice you've had, Dave. <laughs> yeah. All that carp. dialed in the poons and Central, all the Central Park carp have have really taught me something. <laughs> and so and so. Uh, after that, I clearly tap out. I've caught a great fish. I'm happy as can be. Yeah, okay. I can actually hop hop on the paddle board oh, yeah. and get to um, have a really great time. It's, I can it's fun, see what you it? mean. It is, it is some of the most fun I've ever had fishing. Mm -hmm. I actually got to hook another tarpon. Um, the paddle board? Kind of revert it, yeah. Revert it to my old ways on that one and yeah, forgot yeah. the whole setting, the hook That's thing. Cool. Did you fall but, off? Uh, no, and you didn't. And you didn't ask, but I. I know you really want to know. I did bring a cichlid to the boat, so oh, that's, nice. um, that that's what cool. we came for. So I'm coming back out of the channel. I fished it, <laughs> and I look up, and like I thought they were just fishing in the middle of the lagoon. Line height, and so when I picture it, yep. Get it! And then I see Kai standing at the front, just holding the rod up. And eventually I get closer and the rod's bent over. And you can kind of tell it's just not like a, you, can, this? you can tell by the energy on the boat, it's not like a recent fish. Kai's so um, funny about fighting fish too though. He, Kai is funny because he actually does a good job of catching fish for someone who does not catch a lot of fish. I think he just waits for his opportunities. Kai does everything wrong until he catches a fish and he does everything right. So no, I think it was like, it, it was kind of a classic Mahawal day of looking back. I think parts of it feel slow just because we were on the water for about 12 hours. Um, no, there's no discount. But our, our <laughs> Nick, of course, kept the numbers. We were three for nine. Um, it's not bad. Which was which was a really good day. We got three hey, fish to the boat. 300 in MLB are going to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, so, Jim know. got one. Kai got an amazing fish, of course, and I got my first tarpon. So, hell yeah. Well, George had a good day. Or well, tough George day. day. George had a day. So we drove down to Ishkalak. That's just a quick five minute, right? Yeah, five minutes plus fifty five. Yeah, plus got it. So we were there. Right start the day. Pepo took us down to the dock. So <clears throat> right now we go to Ishkalak for trying the tarpons on the dock. So this is our first stop and after that we try a really really beautiful flat on Ishkalak. They have bone fish and permits, some triggers. So we try all the day after after that we go to another spot. It's for, only for permits and triggers. 
and we try hard today, man, because it's a little windy. But the good thing in Nishkala, we have the, the, the we are protect of the reef. So we try right now. The first stop is for the baby tarpons. Really, really in the town. And we look for rolling fish. Saw rolling fish. So he said, grab the rods, let's go. Started the morning with some poons, some rollers, and then um, yeah. threw it a few. I stuck one, little guy hit it, came up, little small fish. Yeah. Tarpon, boom. For five minutes in. Like two minutes later, come tight. This fish jumps. Bigger fish this big time. Fish. Ten, well, I'll say big. Ten, Jumped bigger, five. Ten or fifteen pounds. Five, six times. Came and then it grabbed a bunch of huge chunk of sargasso, of course. And then um, we we're pulling the leader in. And it jumped one more time. Push, spit the hook. Dude, but going nuts. Good fish. Going nuts. Yeah. So we had two fish within, yeah, 15 minutes of the day. All right, all right, let's go down, go chase permit and bones. So we went north a little bit, went to a beach, a beautiful flat. Uh, you and Pepo like kind of took the lead. Yeah, so and Fields and Dan were kind of behind us playing catch up on the back and then right. I went with Pepo. And <clears throat> beautiful flat, kind of around the edge of the, where it gets nice and clear and green and then some seagrass working that edge and we walked and pretty much just slowly walked for 45 minutes anyway so yeah we were walking along the beach waiting nice and slow just scanning 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 didn't say silence just didn't Monotonous, say a word. Yeah. Just, you know cruising yeah. looking for fish dead focus and then sure enough see a little push come Pepo sees it points it out i'm like yep yeah, see it fish start walking towards it pushes off goes away 10 minutes later all of a sudden He's like, tails. I was like, yep, those are tails. Boom, good spot. Permit tails? Yeah, they were definitely black tails. Or, permit tails. Happy, or happy tail. fish. Very happy fish. We keep walking. He says, pushing a little bit more to the left towards the beach so we get a good angle on them. Wind was decent, water was clear. They just happy tailing, eating on the bottom. And he's like, these are happy fish. These are good fish. Let's keep coming, come to the side. And uh, we get within like probably 60 feet. I went and made one cast, a little short, wind kind of took it to the left. And he's like, more to the right, more to the right. Come a little closer. I threw one more, no, no reaction, one more. I thought I put it on their head. It didn't spook, thankfully. Tails are still there, doing their little thing. Happy fish, didn't, had no idea we were there. We got within 40 feet probably, just a perfect shot, 45. I put it to the right of them. And he's like, wait, wait. I'm just trembling in my little space boots. Okay, I'm waiting. And he's like, okay, strip. Line comes tight, fish dives down on it, noses it down. I'm like, yeah. holy shit, I just stuck a permit. Yeah, it takes off. It blows up. And we're like, yeah! Fields yeah. on the beach watching this. And just, we go crazy. Like, holy shit, fish is All on. we heard was tails, and then we watch them for like 10 minutes. minutes. Yeah. yeah. So that fish eats, takes off. I'm clearing line, clearing line, clearing line. We're like, yeah! Yeah, we're all yelling. And all of a sudden, the last, the last three feet of line. No. Yeah, rolled Perfect around. wrap, rolled around the thing. Oh. I'm like, no! Ooh. So I start running forward. He does. I have shoots he forward, does. grabs my line, trying to like give me yeah, some George, slack George, while I pull the yeah. line out. Steps forward fast. And I'm like picking, picking, picking it. You know, does a wrap around. It was on the handle and it was on the real seat. So I'm pulling it off the real seat. I got that and I was like, all right, now here we go, the handle. And, it... and I did that. You put... Huge pop, and I'm like, oh my god, I just broke up with Which And then all of a sudden, I look up, and I'm like, wait, hang on, what's... My fly line's sitting here, I was like, what, what just happened? And then George torque Fly line's the fly. right here. I snapped the fly line. Not the 12 no pound tippet. The fly line snapped. What is fly line? I have some anger issues I didn't know yeah, about, apparently. And toss his rod. I just <laughs> yeeted the rod. The I drop all kind of bad words I normally don't say. So uh, yeah, stuck my first permit today. It was a, probably eight, 12 pound fish, somewhere in that range. To 12, we don't know for sure, but enough to break a freaking fly line, apparently on my damn real seat. Moral of the story is, Pepo's badass did his job, and it's the worst possible angler. I fucked it up. You know what, Pepo? Cut that out. You know what Pepo said? <laughs> You know what Pepo said two or three times today? 
when we take a break or like kind of get down or slow, he'd be like, let's go back to work. Let's go to work. Let's go to work. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yep. We have four more days. Four more. We'll keep working, man. Let's keep working. Let's we do keep it. Keep working, man. Keep working. Right, keep working. I don't know where to begin. How was y'all's day? I'm so exhausted. Uh, we drove out to Ishkalak. Okay. Um, started off basically on like a little uh, pier out there. Because mm -hmm. uh, we pulled up, there was tarpon rolling everywhere. <laughs> Literally all over the freaking place. It's absolutely insane. We're all standing there and literally everybody's just like, over there, over there, over there, over there. And you could just pick wherever the heck you really wanted to sit and just have at it. Yeah. They're being a little finicky. Uh, of course, Kai manages to get one. Um, within like the first, what, like 30 minutes or something. Um, so he pretty much uh, said, no, nah, I'm good for the rest of the day after that. Uh, <laughs> that was a good fish. Yeah, it was a good size. Um, I don't know. You're a good fish. Yeah, I can't give you a weight. Uh, yeah. Not quite like another hog he got, but solid one for sure. Uh, he didn't have to wrestle it for 40 minutes either, so that was good. Dave made a couple catches, caught the ground a couple times, real good. <laughs> really good, caught the ground. <laughs> Definitely had to walk out there to get this place like, <laughs> out of it. But apart from that, it really wasn't much else. It was kind of a slow day. Oh, uh, man. Still, for the most part. Dan, come here. That's sunburn, Dan. <laughs> My wife will be so proud. <laughs> Point five really does it good justice. <laughs> How'd you guys do? So this, this explains the day. So Nick wanted to take us to one of his hardest to access lagoons. I, I don't know, I'm gonna go on the record and say today was the hardest day of fishing I've ever done. Really? Yeah, it's not bad, not, not, not bad, no, but hardest. Physically. Where this area is, is that it's kind of tucked in the jungle and you have to drag Nick's John boat all the way down this very, very narrow mangrove tunnel and you've got to maneuver it and drag it and heave and hoe and it's heavy. Um, and, and what we were excited about this time is that we were gonna bring boat boards because um, we thought they were like the perfect match. So we actually brought two to put in the lagoon. Um, but like, you know, you've got you to pack in Nick's batteries, you've got to pack in all your gear, you've got to pack in all the camera equipment. So, you know, I think from, you know, coffee to lines in the water is two hours of work getting it all set up. And then again, that excitement was high. I came out, found out like Nick hadn't fished it in a year. So it was really well rested water. Me, Dan, and um, Fields are in the boat with Nick and George goes on a paddle board. And apparently George, you know, pings a bunch of fish, like jumps them, feeds them. Uh, dude, with those little boat boards, you're super mobile. Yeah. Like you're, you're almost more mobile than Nick's boat is. And like you can get in and you can slide in. The fish, fish won't spook. So Ben Fields, so some of his buddies had tied these deer hair poppers for him for this trip. And he's like, dude, I really want to catch one on that. And I was like, okay, let's do it. And, uh, and Nick was like, look, we got small and stupid fish right here. And, um, and Fields was popping, 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 gets one to eat. This is my time. Come in the shop. Sorry. So I got the, uh, I got this tarpon to eat a deer hair frog, and uh, he eats it. Denbo's super high energy, you know. Keep shipping. Yep. Straight in. Set the hook. Fight him for a minute. He makes a couple jumps, and then he ran, and I, and I dropped my rod. He goes, "You're pointing your rod at him, which is kind of weird." <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, yeah boy. boy, that's right, boy. Let's fucking go! All right, so Nick's like, hey, we're gonna go into the middle of the lake to see if we see anything. And so we stare out a little bit, and he's like, look, there's this deep hole in the middle of the cenote um, that connects to the sea. Let's go see if there's tarpon there. And right as we're gliding to the cenote, we just see fish go, boom, 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 boom. And then, then, they, then they circle back, like they didn't spook at all. I threw my tarpon fly and tick, 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 and this golden flash goes wham, and Nick's like, oh, that's a great like local tarpon, and then it comes up and shakes its head, and it's a snook. Oh. It comes up, and it's, it's a good snook, and I was like, hey, that's great. Um, land it, and then uh, they're still all around the boat, and so Dan grabs a fly rod, and he like flops it this way and pops it once, and another snook goes <laughs> and hits it, and we're like, ah, and then it spit it, and then Nick's like, stop, don't throw top water. We need to play with them. And so that's what we do is like, so we, we don't, we pull the top water back in the boat. Um, Dan gets up. Oh, yep, yep. This is my time. I'm on the rise. Can't hold me down, I'm too bad. This is my time. Ready to shine. Brighter than all of the lights. Cause when it's game time. Seconds away and the game's on the line. There ain't no doubt in my mind. Beating the buzzer like, this is my time. Then Fields gets up. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> you! Don't point your boat at the snook. <laughs> kind of wax this good snook, uh, and we bring it to the boat, and it's like, yeah, it's a good snook, and so. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that snook was nice. But so, like, I would say, like, at that point, like, our spirits were pretty high. Um, and we're like, this is gonna roll into a good day. And, and as it like sometimes goes, like the day just starts to kind of eat away and starting to like kind of bleed. And so we were throwing at fish, throwing at fish. And at one point, like George was started talking about like how he had done in the paddleboard. And he's like, oh, I like stuck like eight fish or something. He's like, I fed eight fish and like jumped a couple. And he's like, dude, these boat boards are super awesome. That's great. And we were like, we're sitting there like, that's awesome, man. I'm so glad you've been sticking fish while we're like out here just melting. Do you want to trade? And he was like, yes, yeah. I'm dead. Can I, can, you know, come on the paddle board? And so I was like, oh, this will be fun. And so I set off on a wild adventure. And kind of go north and round the corner and come back. And then I get stuck in the wind tunnel. Yeah. And so I have to heave all my way back up. And so I think for me, like my consolation prize was that after I caught the wind like Dan and, um, I'm looking for a fish, I'm not seeing anything. I'm like, again, I'm re-sweating through my thing. I'm like feeling a little woozy. And then out of nowhere, these two fish poke out of the mangrove and make a cast and literally pop, pop. And one of them peels off and goes. And I was like, oh, and so I, I, I get two jumps out of him. That's why this place is special, is because you can be in these like shallow water lagoons and see tarpon and throw a popper at them and watch them just absolutely erupt. And then we had to go home. Everything we did to get there, we now had to do in reverse. Dehydrate, we drank every drink in the cooler, water, juice, beer. Like actually, you and Dan, y'all drank beer and then had to do 
probably the mo biggest cardiac exercise any of us have had in a long time. I was over under at 0.5 heart attacks after that. I thought at least somebody was gonna have one. Dimbo, oh, Dimbo he took was a knee. He took Dan a knee. Took he said it might be the last time he fishes that lagoon. Yeah. I mean, you get it's to a point. Wreck. It's 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 the most strenuous workout I've yeah. done in years, and I work out every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This, this is the hardest day of fishing I've ever done. Not, and again, hardest is not the worst. Hardest is not bad. It's just, dude, we, 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 we were in it. So it was, it was a good day. It was just a really hard day. Um, but I've started to realize that that's kind of the rhythm down here. Every day is good. Every day is wonderful out here, but they're just, there's no easy days. Nope. Yeah. I mean, y'all probably put in, what, six miles of hiking on the Yay. beach? Easy. <laughs> and then we were doing, you know, weightlifting through the jungle. Yep. I guess we'll keep at it. Let's get to work, baby. Yeah, let's, let's get, get to work. How did we do today? How did we do you today? Scoot out? We did great. Absolutely wonderful. Did you, you didn't fish, did you? Not in the slightest, it was wonderful. <laughs> we needed a rest day real hard. These small hour days kind of, you know, kick straight in the pooper real bad. So. <laughs> We, uh, Kai Daniel and I said, bump that. Finally, the much anticipated day off. We need to rest. So yeah. we got up at, I don't know, like 9, 10. Dan tried to catch a couple of iguanas by the tail. Got real close. A touch um, too. Yeah. Decided to go into town because it was cruise ship day. I saw uh, four cruise ships parked right out here. Yeah. I had no idea they were that big. Yeah, I walked out in the morning, there were three docked and the fourth one was pulling up and I just immediately thought, oh, these poor people went down. <laughs> so there were 15,000 Americans that descended on Mahawal. Yeah, pretty much. And um, that sounds horrible for them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, seven have done the job. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. I yes, met you guys the, for lunch. Yeah, the Malikon. I forgot about that. I met you guys at lunch, yeah. yeah. What, La Pancha? La Pancha? Is that yeah. it? Pancha. La Pancha. He's yeah. laughing at your bad was... Spanish. Okay, how do I say it properly? La Pancha. That's what I said. La Pancha. Pancha. Yeah, but you said. That's like... what Nick said. <laughs> La Pancha? La Pancha? Yeah. La you said, Pancha. You said it with a southern British accent. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, it's yeah. been a long day. Me and Meadows killed it. Yeah? I mean, we had a we had a great experience. We okay. di DIY bone fished. Just walking for a little bit on the on the beach, we uh, weren't seeing much happening, but we thought, let's keep going. Let's walk up to this next point. And when we got up to the next point, we were like, hey, this looks fishy. Let's walk up to the next point. And so we just <laughs> kept going and we came up on a school of about 20 bonefish mm. that Ben put me on and uh, I was able to sight cast. I put, put one kind of conservative as to not spook them. Yeah. Uh, and then the next one I put right on mm. them and all 20 of them turned around and chased it. Oh, they and awesome. for it? Were they... Yeah. Were that whole number? Yeah, the awesome. smallest one ate. <laughs> of course. Yeah. And uh, came tied on him. Okay. He ran as soon as he was as soon as he was getting to my uh, to my reel uh, piece of sargasso that was caught in my fly line mm. behind me, caught up in the second rod guide, oh, and he and he broke me off. It was a bummer. I mean, it was a you know, it's just it's the cost of doing business though. Uh, we got to side cast a few jacks too in the surf. Right here, field of the shot. Throw at him with his face. Are oh, you coming back? Do you feel me coming back? See that big strato? Jog up to him and try to get to him. Oh, that's a good fish. All right, he's coming in. He's going to do the same loop. Oh, no, he's pushing. Sorry. Those were so fast, and uh, it's hard to put one in the right spot, but uh, mm -hmm. it was good, man. One of the, 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 the perks of fishing that part of the beach is 
uh, there was a there was a nice lodge there that that, that served margaritas <laughs> right as we were walking out. So we got to sit down and chill in the hammocks. Refreshing beverage part way through. Yeah, yeah. Get get a shot at a bonefish. You know, get tied on one, and then and then on your way back have a margarita and a hammock ride for a few minutes. Not bad. No, that's not it's bad. Not at bad. All. That's not bad at all. Yeah. And then we met up with uh, we met up with Nick Dembo and his boys. And uh, there was some there was some action in the surf, and there was some tarpon rolling out in the tannic kind of apple juice water. But I was so gassed from walking six miles on the beach. Uh, there's a creek that flows in just where we parked, and uh, it, it kind of pushes some dark red, kind of crimson water back up into the creek. We we stood there for a minute, looked around. Rolling tarpon were around in that creek, pushing up from the ocean side, which was a bit of a surprise. Put a few casts with some deer hair poppers, uh, and first cast, boom. Found out that the that the popper was was just too big. The, the water was forcing forcing the deer hair and the feathers outside of their mouth as they came up to eat it. So we had had trouble putting one on them. Uh, but they were hungry. They were hungry, and so we moved up and down the creek, kept throwing uh, kept throwing top water at them and trying to tease them up, and that worked. Uh, got another another eat, and then decided you know maybe subsurface is the play. So we threw some, some subsurface stuff at them and it just ate again. I believe I fed seven tarpon, none of which I came tied on. And then after I had no luck, I was fed up, I went out to uh, to a rocky point to, to drink some beers and cast it, you know, hopefully any kind of passing schools that I might see. I gave Mr. Meadows the paddleboard to ride up in that creek, which was a great tool for that. I hear a lot of commotion coming from that creek. I just got done fishing, and Meadows had hooked a tarpon, uh, and yeah, and and brought it brought it to the paddleboard, which was a really cool thing to see. It was a nice fish, probably five eight pound fish. It's good. It was good, man. Sounds like you got into some good stuff. Absolutely, hundred percent. Would recommend rest day.
rest day. Highly recommend. Yeah. My, I, I did a half rest, you know, walk the beach, have a margarita, chill out, yeah. then fish some more. Yeah. You gotta factor it in at least a smidge. Let's get to work. Let's get to work. Today was a full Denbo day with Denbo. our boy Peppa. Went out. We did pretty much anything you can do, I think, on this coastline. Five species? Yep. Probably five different fisheries, too. More than that, probably. But we went up north towards the park and we found cenotes. We did beach. We did deep flats. We did shallow flats. We did paddleboard. Sand. We did john boat. We did wade. Turtle grass. Turtle grass, sure. Sand, rocks, turtle. Red, red water. Red water. Tarpon. Clean water. Permit. Bones. Uh, it was an okay start. I think the uh, diazepam really helped. <laughs> I, I definitely got a few gray hairs over it. Uh, but but it's a lagoon where it's a very cruel mistress. She uh, she makes you fall in love with her and then she just locks you out. That, that spot really doesn't have a name. And the first time we drifted over it, uh, you hooked up that fish, which unfortunately came unstuck. Uh, we, we, we went around, we fished some more, and then we fished the other side. Yeah, so I got another tarpon today. He got it! Another. <laughs> my third tarpon jump got my second tarpon, and it was a pretty good day on the boat. We're recording. Uh, yeah, I got my first one of the trip, landed the first one, and I was uh, pretty stoked about it. I said Woo! I, uh, I kind of have to, uh, I'm a little rusty at the beginning of the trips and then I basically just watch what other people are doing, get yelled at a bunch, see what everybody else screws up. And then I learned over the first, nerves. you know, three, four days of what not to do. <laughs> and then by the last day or two, I'm, you know, halfway decent. Like I can, I can get something in there. So it was, uh, I think it was kind of hefty and he was very active. Yeah, at least seven or eight jumps. Like yeah. that yeah. sucker was, you like to switch those sides on the air. Honestly, you look like you caught a thousand tarpon. I was you made you made your guide so happy and, and you had to work that rod tip around several times and, and you didn't break my rod, thank you. And uh, and you kept that fish on and you got it to hand. Well done buddy, that, that was a pleasure to watch. Pleasure to watch. We had been told by Nick that there was a cenote down by one of the islands. We weren't exactly sure where we were, where the islands were, where the cenote was. That's right, it's one of the harder lakes to get to and I just can't get my jumbo down there. So it's kind of paddle boards only. Now the cenote is over on this far shore. It's only about 10 foot offshore, but it's a pretty big hole. Okay. Hopefully there'll be fish rolling on it and they'll say, oh, well, that's, that's where the cenote is. I like that plan. Once you get into the lake, it'll shallow back up again. But that's okay. a swampy, marshy entrance. That's it, grab those boards, come on up. So we put into the paddleboard only lagoon, AKA the 
20 foot walk, what, what was the quote from Nick? He was like, 20 or so meters. It was more like 100 or so meters. Yeah, it was significant. It wasn't too bad though. Mud, about to the knees. Yep. But honestly, it wasn't that bad. We've done worse. Anyways. Carried the in. paddle boards in. Yep, put Loaded in. Loaded up all of our gear. Start pushing. And the water starts getting darker. Like oh, well. pretty deep at that point. Wasn't too long before we saw a rolling fish right up against the mangrove. Through one cast, put it down, one tick. Immediate action though. Yeah, like blew it up very quickly. So that was promising sign. And um, I was like, hey Dave, I'm gonna try one more. And saw another fish. It was one of those parallel shots, side of the paddle board. And I did this and the fish, as I started releasing, the fish kind of freaked out. And I was like, oh God, he's spooked. It wasn't spooking, it turns out. He was attacking the fly. It's hungry. On the way down, <laughs> blew it up again. And I'm like, did he try to eat it or did he try to smack the sh with his face. Like the fly was here in the fish instead of going there with its mouth. It was like, I'm just gonna do a rainbow over Yeah. It. What was that? I mean, did you hook it or did he cartwheel it? I was like, damn it, it's two now. I wanna see if I can go these to actually eat or stick for a second. We came around this corner, there's a big open flat. It was probably only 18 inches deep, pretty shallow. And then I just see two distinct black lines coming down, do a perfect turn. And I'm like, oh boy, here we go. Saw the broad top, tops of their head. It's like, that's good sized fish. Knees start shaking, of course. Throw it a cast. Off again. I was like, all right, Dave, your turn. Yeah, so we changed the route at that point. We keep going down. I mean, the conditions are phenomenal. That's the good morning, yeah. Kind of the best, the best we've seen in the lagoons all, all week. Water super clear, super slack. Um, so I'm excited to get up there. I would say foreshadowing, decently arrogant to go from bring your first tarp into hand to, I'm gonna try to do this on a paddleboard now. Yeah, just but a few more variables. Why not? Um, so we're going down. You were, you were mostly waiting for rollers. I started doing a few blind casts in a fishy looking spots. Right. And soon enough, I think I see just something on the bottom. It's not moving like we were used to, but it looks, you know, vaguely fishy. So I just plunk the fly right on top of it. And same with yours, immediately explodes out of the water with it. Um, starts running, which is amazing, awesome, why you tarpon fish, but I'm standing up on a paddleboard at this point. It immediately, just, literally brings me to my knees. I go down to try to stabilize myself, reach down with my left hand, throw the anchor off. Um, and that time it starts making a run towards the mangrove. Keep it at the trees. Oh boy. <laughs> Heck yeah! Yeah! Off? Oh. Uh, you sure? Dude, that was badass. And it's gone. Jumped like almost into that dead wood, didn't it? Yep. Yeah. Did not survive the jump. Uh, 
That was amazing. Loved it. Um, we keep going down the rest of that shoreline. So I get the anchor down, but I'm still drifting a little bit. I'm fiddling with that. I look down. You're not, five feet off the bank too. Yeah, and not five feet from me is a very, very good fish. Hmm? It kind of sees me and does a thing where it's like, all right, I'll move along, starts to scurry. So I just kind of desperation throw the fly down. It's in the glare, I can't really see it. I know, dude. Nothing you can do. Oh, yes! That's a big fish, Dave, stay tight. Keep, keep stripping, keep stripping, keep stripping, keep stripping. Runs to the right. I think it like spits it or loses it for a second. This tarpon is just determined to eat the fly. It grabs it. I finally <laughs> stick it. At that point, I've got five feet of line out. It's right on front of the boat. So I'm trying to like kind of do this weird set thing. And then it just turns me 180 degrees. I go again back down to the knees um, as it runs off. I'm trying to get line back. I'm trying to get the rod high. It, very conveniently for the camera, goes straight to you. Yep. Holy shit. Oh my God. <laughs> and that was the, that was the Forbidden Lagoon. Only accessible with paddle boards. Hasn't been fished since the Mayans were here in 1500 BC. <laughs> we'll fact check that. <laughs> Science. We'll adjust the numbers later. Yeah, 10 out of 10, wood fish again. What else you got? Man, I had a heck of a day. We found some bones in the surf uh, up in the park and uh, we're able to cast at them pretty quick and get a couple couple bones to hand real fast. This morning for me personally, kind of started slow. I mean, obviously sleeping in until 10 was great. I didn't really catch anything. I saw a bunch of barracuda. I saw the biggest permit of my life and he turned on it and broke my heart. But that was it for me for the morning. And we got to the second spot and uh, right away like, and there was 50 bonefish laying on the sand 50 feet from our truck. I kind of waded uh, north, started pulling, and I saw a competition, and I thought I got a bone. It was just a tiny baby needlefish. So we got a few good shots at them, had some eat. I think we had three eats. We got yeah, two yeah, to yeah, hand. Yeah. I mean, they were nice fish yeah, too. There was a bunch. Oh, Ben uh, caught a really good bone. Caught a very good Fatty. bone fish. Yeah. yeah. After that bonefish school kind of dissipated, Peppo had spotted some permit and was taking Dave out to uh, to target the permit. And uh, I really played dog sitter. <laughs> we had these, we had these two them. damn dogs. Beautiful pit bull mix and a German shepherd. And uh, I was terrified at first. I was like, these dogs are gonna bite us. So I was like, hello puppy. So he'd been all sweet to them. And then they were like, oh, Ooh. hello, Mr. Man. And they stayed with us all afternoon. And anything we saw in the water. Every time somebody started fishing. Anytime anyone pointed at the water, those damn the water. that damn German Shepherd would get in there 
Did you see it standing on it its hind legs? It would float like this. <laughs> Permit loved it. It had its feet <laughs> on the bottom. Yeah, dude. And I swear the thing was six feet tall yeah, dude. with its legs all the way down. And it was like kind of adorable, but also it got to a point where I was like, all right, these dogs. <laughs> And so we were all just kind of standing on the on the beach looking out and we saw some tails come up. We said, there's permit right here. And we watched it for a second and then it was like, no, that's rolling tarpon. Yeah. I didn't know, we've already caught a bonefish. We've seen permit and now we have rolling tarpon without moving our feet. On the like, same beach? At the Hunters, same place. And so I run out there, I run out there with a with a permit rig set up to, to fish permit and I'm halfway out there before I realize I'm looking at rolling tarpon. Wow. And so I had to dig into my bag. I didn't have much. I had something in my box though uh, that that resembled a bunny shape. Put one couple strips. Knew he was there. I knew he was right there. He was in a school of about three fish. Stuck him. Jumped right away. Bowed to him. Gave him a couple more. Gave him another run pretty quick. And then uh, he jumped again. Denbo taught me. It's all about surviving the jumps. <laughs> <laughs> I had him close and and Combo said he's gonna run one more time and he sure did. He made one final jump and uh, rod tip was high but there was still some there was still a little Back bit of belly. there was still a little belly in the water and that was enough to to, to, to was, give him the the, the leverage he, he needed. Straightened to, the hook, right? He did straighten yeah, the hook. But yeah, but he was within one foot of that leader at one point. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. was he was up so to my right. So that's a technical rod. capture, right? It, I'm counting it. I'm not okay. counting it. Uh, I should I should count it because I could have easily pulled the leader inside of the rod tip if I wanted to. But we but don't roll that way. We do not roll that <laughs> way. That's the second thing you taught me. <laughs> <laughs> but but jumping that tarpon and. Uh, seeing that ac that acrobatic nature. <laughs> being able to walk these beaches and see so many species of fish, being able to cast in barracudas, being able to target permit, and then set into some bonefish and tarpon all within very short shoreline is, is next level. Man. We've been to a lot of cool places, a lot of places you can catch the big three, but here's hands down the most fun way to do it. Just taking cars out, going north, getting in John boats, getting on paddle boards, being in Places that probably have fish have only seen a fly a few times. Um, they just act different. The way we do it is just super cool. I don't know. It's just, I could spend three more months here. Two guys made me real proud today. Hook played and landed top and looked like they've been doing it their whole lives. Uh, that is the, a guide's best dream. I'm not sure how we can top these last days, but uh, I'm all about trying to do it. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's get out there with yeah. all this kit we got, those paddle boards. Keep working. Do it all, again. And just do it again. Obviously, we didn't get to recap the day. You know, the last day was just way too busy. And so uh, here we are. It's starting to get cold in Birmingham. In the meantime, Tommy, you've had a baby. <laughs> so it's, you know, just a, li a little can happen, you know, coming back from a trip. And <laughs> so the last day we started out like, you know, you always on that last day, you wanted to go, go out on a high finish. But if you remember the day before, we had a hell of a day. where Fields, you know, stuck that big tarpon from the beach. Tommy, y'all did, did the bonefish from the beach thing. I remember we were all talking on seawall, it was gonna be a letdown. So, Tommy, we started the day at 6 a.m.? Yeah, we got a pretty early start. I think we were looking for, for permit, you know, obviously last day. No one had caught a permit other than Dan's mini Phew. slam. <laughs> uh, um, no one had gotten a permit that would fit, you know, outside their hand. Um, which is obviously one of the big things you go to uh, that area of Mexico for. Denbo was hot on getting out early. It was kind of a slow start. Do you remember it being that way too? Like we, we pulled up to some flats and he's like, yeah, these permit will move in and, and move out. Um, 
We found we found that one fish on the rock, so we split up on those kind of cliffs because he's like the permit will come in and feed on the rocks. And I think George had a shot at one there, but it was like it was pretty gnarly, like very splashy. So we were like, okay, rocks aren't working, but um, maybe we can try some of the, the, the like white sand beaches, which to me reminds me a lot of like the Gulf Coast of Florida, like really pretty white sand, but a little bit of depth to it. And I think. Y'all started on one side, and, and George and myself and Peppo started on another. And so we went on forever, it felt like. And we didn't see squat. I did catch a bonefish that morning, and I got it in. It was just like this little pip squeak. <laughs> Bonefish? Yeah. Yeah, I got my little baby bone, Belizean bone oh, looking yeah. thing. So finally, Dembo was like, all right, I'm gonna go back and get the truck and I'll just find you guys, I'll pick you up up here. So I just kept walking. All of a sudden came up to the spot and there's just like 10 permit. You know, all of a sudden just start freaking out and casting to him and I had the little, uh, topwater crab on yes floating and crab, baby floating crab and i like i got one to come up and like you know you hear it like pop at the surface and oh. i never never came tight or whatever and i'm just like you know last day pressure's on i'm like didn't feel them and then just kept casting and i just just couldn't get any other reaction after that So finally, somebody picked me up and moved me off that beach because I probably wouldn't <laughs> have moved otherwise. They said, hey, let's go down to this little shack and drink margaritas on the beach. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll take a temporary break on my permit adventure to go drink a margarita. And so we were like south of y'all. We cruised probably three or four miles, just fast paced, looking for a shot. George got like two shots at bonefish they didn't eat. Uh, at one point, like George is like waiting out and I look back and like Peppo's like high sticking and he's gotten a bonefish. And it's like, and again, it's like those beachside bonefish. They're two handers, like quality fish. But yeah, so at that point we had like covered all the shoreline. So we drive up, actually I remember we drove and we passed y'all. Then we like saw Nick's truck and then I was like, wait, there's dudes fishing. Denbo's like, you know, there's this little spot and uh, it's usually good for a bonefish or two. Let's just stop there. I was about the same time that Dan and Kai and Ben Fields rolled up with some tacos for the boys. Me and uh, Fields, actually, I don't, honestly, that day we all got, I mean, well, at least I did. I, yeah, I didn't really fish. I was there. Me and Kai and Fields were just, we had our tunes going. Dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> we were just vibing all day. Do you remember we were actually on the beach already? And we heard like reggaeton, like bass thump, and we're like, and I was like, I don't know what's about to happen. I don't know if there's gonna be a like a pickup truck with a bunch of folks we don't know. <laughs> I don't like. I, I had a little bit of a butt pucker, I'll be honest. And then Kai is like, let's go, and I was like, Dad, come it. All right, this is where the day ends. There would be a bunch of Alabama degenerates rolling up. But yeah, like, like they come on the beach, right? Like repping the turtle box, the cooler full of beers and the, and the tacos. And I was just like, I remember being like, that gummit, like we're we're here to catch fish. Turtle box, tequila, and tacos. That's right, Delivery. turtle box, tequila, and tacos. That was the essentials the, to life. Well, and, and like, I was so torn at that point. Cause I was like, I, you know, I hadn't had the rod yet. So I was like, dang it, I want to like fish. And like, this is going to get out of hand quickly and you know like i think it goes back to that maybe fish don't care about sound it was just your granddad trying to get you to shut up <laughs> Can you hear sound?
because like they put the turtle box in the sand blaring tunes and i don't know if you remember george literally throws in once you know sticks it and then we're off and and you've got that school of bonefish there and so we're like okay well maybe like and catch as many as we want Peppo gets like 50 yards down the beach and all of a sudden he turns around and he's like, yeah, Tommy, Tommy, like, there's permit coming. Um, waving us all. And so you you had a rod and you just like picked up and, and went down there. It was really cool to watch. You're just casting and casting and like there's 10 or 15 fish in there. You couldn't buy a bite for like the first probably 15 casts. Yeah, so I was using a very standard like permit pattern and it was sitting really high in the water column. I could just tell because you're like, you're, I mean, those fish at some points were 15 feet away. And again, I'm waist deep in the water. And so I can see their like facial responses and that, wa you know, that crab's coming too high in the water column. They're just like, no, nah, I'm not chasing that. Peppo gets over my shoulder and he's like, do you, do you want something different? I was like, dude, do we have like a shrimp that's like heavier? Because my thought was like to let it go down the water column and then come back up. So it's eye level to them. And sure enough, like first cast threw it, you know, over to the right of the school, let it drop just tick, 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 tick. And then like, you see those black fans whoop, do that. And I was like, oh no, it's about to happen. <laughs> you know, it's like bump, it's bump. And I think that was one of the most like, fun parts of that like you know beach party like we could say it's like a turtle box, box beach party right is like everybody was watching and so when i stuck it and cleared the line of course i lose my mind because i'm a child but then like peppo's like ah and then like everybody else on the beach is like ah and then kai's by the turtle box like wait what uh, oh yeah, we're, we're on. <laughs> no, I mean, we've, we've all caught some cool fish together, but I, I will say that the stoke of having everybody there, like everybody watching, especially like at a time where like, we were just there to like pick up a bonefish and then go to the margarita place. Come on, yeah! Look, he's got those scoots. Yeah, yeah dude. His tail. That's a pretty. Oh, he did. He got bit, didn't he? Cuda tried to bite his tail off. That's okay. Hold on, Nick. Hold it one. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, dude. That's the shot. <laughs> it was kind of a casual time out on the beach anyway, and then all of a sudden it turns into you catching up the, the first permit of the trip. Yeah. Uh, and so. And of course, I'm know. freaking out, right? I'm like, I'm like, okay, now I can't lose the fish in front of eight people. Um, I mean, I'm watching the whole thing and just like, you know, no way. And I'm like, you know, I've, I've watched you, you know, set the hook on it and everything. And just like, you know, when you're in that group and everybody's just so amped up, like it, it was a, it was a really, really cool experience. It kind of break, breaks all the stereotypes of fly fishing, right? You got to be alone. You got to be quiet. You got to be focused. It's like we were just goofing, like yeah. you know, basically treating bonefish like ladyfish. You know, I was actually in my head, I was like, dude, I just want a taco. Like, I just want a taco. I want a taco and a bonefish and I could die happy. And then, yeah, and then I'm, I'm there holding this permit. And it was cool. I mean, again, that was just a cool, cool experience because that's just not typical of fly fishing. At best, you'll have two people on a boat, let alone all these people on, on the beach, like, freaking out. And um, yeah. so I got to release that fish and celebrate with Nick. And, and then sure enough, like, the school comes right back and I was like all right Tommy this is you baby <laughs> so that they were just coming they were cruising down the beach and this is the first time that me and Fields were going and then so we were sitting there and I had the rod with the with the floating crab on it you know I'd cast into it and I you know just got that uh, laid that crab out um and you know let him a little bit waited for him to start coming up on it and then just did those long strips and you know just you had that perfect V moving behind it and uh all of a sudden they came up on it. And so, you know, fed them on top water, uh, which is just absolutely epic. 
uh, on the top. And so you know the same thing, like just you know being surrounded by everybody, and you know this like. David had called it, like me and, and Fields are right there, and like Denbo's around, everybody's around, and it's just like hooked up, and everybody just, yeah! <laughs> um, you know, people are like patting me on the shoulder, and uh, I mean, it was just, uh, I mean, absolutely epic. Dan, throw it in front of you, throw it in front of you, right in front of you, right in front of you. No, 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 behind you, behind you, behind you. Where did he go? Right here, right here, right here, right here. Do you see him? Um, and I was actually really surprised at how well Permit fought. So they obviously have that reputation and everything, and I, I knew they fought really well, but like, man, he, you know, especially because he could get in that deeper water, like, he smoked it. Um, and so it was a, uh, a, a, a long fight, strong fight. Yeah, yeah no, that yeah. happened. It was it kept like a thirty minute, or sorry, thirty foot run every time he turned and touched him for a minute, and I had to keep coming him back, and he's walking the line in, and you're like flipping uh, the line over his head so he doesn't like. Oh my gosh, if the line gets stuck at the top of the cap, and that's what causes me to lose a permit, I cannot lose live with myself. Yeah, <laughs> and you know I'm a big ladyfish guy, so it's a lot of pressure. It is. <laughs> And, you know, so it kind of just added to the intensity of like, I'm going to get this fish in. Like, did I have any nicks in my leader from back casting and hitting the sand? You know, what, I, you know, yeah, just so yeah. prepared for everything. And started the know, day on the rocks. Like, what what happened then? You know, like, yeah, like I don't know. I was kind of going through all that. I was really nervous about getting them in. And um, finally, Dembo went. grabbed the fish and held it up and you know same thing just like stoke party number two it was such a such a way to end the trip and two for me you know because remember i only, i was only there half the time um so so we we have this you know permit party on the beach uh it kind of winds down i think a couple more bonefish got got hooked i was just like man this is awesome right do permit in that that party and then of course go have a amazing uh, margarita and so I remember that's where you know we all kind of linked up a couple of the boys had had a couple so uh, they weren't really good at angling after that but uh, we, we all got to meet up and have a, a celebration margarita yep. everybody was talking at that point about Grand Slam for both of us which for me I think me and you had the same feeling about that we're like I'm just so content like, You know, Denbo wanted it for us, and so I was like, all right, well, let's do that. So I remember, yeah, you came in, you're like, dude, I'm ready. I was like, okay, let's go get your Grand Slam. Everybody, we set off north, back to Dan's Rock, back to the ditch where it all started. Well, it was kind of rocky there for a little bit because we got there, and there's tarpon rolling everywhere in that little ditch. But it's a very narrow ditch, so they get you know educated pretty quick. And so, you know, you go 40 feet down, and you could get another one. But you know, those small fish are so hard to keep on. So, um, you know, I, it, it, was, it was pretty comical. <laughs> go up and whack the fly, and set the hook, and I get you know a couple of jumps, and they throw the hook, and, you know, and so. just got away from me you know, broke off right at the shore that was actually like a nice you know five or eight pounder for for the ditch get him bring him
you know, and I, I it was like, like we just put all this effort in. I'm not even gonna get the the grand slam. Like, <laughs> drove all the way out here to the ditch and. Um, you know, kept going up and down after they kind of learned that somebody was in there messing with them. They all kind of got locked off and uh, let them settle for a little bit. And... But then finally, like, you know, getting eaten by mosquitoes, like last ditch effort, you know, got that. Uh... Yep. Nice. Put it down, put it yep. down, put it 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 down! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The official slam! <laughs> oh man. Dish pickle. Take the picture first. Don't let go with the thumb grip. Little one on, just like bass fished them in, just skipped them across the surface and nice. He was okay. like this big and um so, anyways, got the little ditch pickle, got the uh, got the grand slam. So it turned in to be uh, a, a pretty pretty epic day. Hell of a way to end a trip for sure. Yeah, and that was just special to watch you, who really kind of shepherded George and I into tarpon fly fishing. It was so cool to see you get a grand slam, a very well deserved grand slam. Um, and maybe there's a little poetic hilariousness about like the tarpon was the hardest part. <laughs> <laughs> no, but. It was uh, it was pretty epic. I'm ready to go back. You ready? <laughs> Let's get to work. <laughs>